Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to Mayor Victor Gordo's 2022 a State of the City Address. The second in his tenure in the first in person. Wow, in person, how awesome is that? I'll clap for that. It's great to see people in three dimensions. I don't know about you, I'm getting a little tired of Zoom. And you all look amazing tonight. I'm Andy Wilson, and I have the honor of serving as your vice mayor. Uh, in addition to being the body double uh, for Mayor uh, Gordo, uh, the vice mayor has the honor of serving as the master of ceremonies for the state of the city, so um, I feel really privileged. In just a few minutes, you'll hear from Mayor Gordo about some of the city's major accomplishments in 2021, as well as the incredible challenges we have all faced as a community in the last year as we continue to navigate this global pandemic. However, I'd first like to acknowledge our city leadership and dignitaries, so um, I would ask when I call out your group that you stand so we can acknowledge you. First, my esteemed colleagues from the Pasadena City Council, my um, fellow colleague council members. I know we have a few up front. Could you stand up, please? We'll call. <laughs> it's an honor and privilege to serve with all of you. Uh, we have, um, I know, a number of Pasadena City College trustees, so if you could stand and be um, recognized. Thank you all for your service and for uh, sharing this uh, lovely venue with us. Then I know we have representatives from Senator Portentino's and Assembly um, uh, Member Holden's office, so if you could stand to be recognized as well. Dominic, Anne-Marie, welcome. I'd also like to acknowledge um, key city leadership, including our acting city manager, Cynthia Kurtz. Cynthia, I saw you. Hi, Cynthia. Please stand up and be recognized. We're so grateful for her service. Um, city Attorney, I know Michelle Bagneris is here. Michelle, thank you. And our wonderful City Clerk, Mark Jomsky, um, and the rest of the City Management Team. So if you're on the City Management Team, please stand up. City Manager, thank you all. We could not um, have a city of Pasadena without your amazing leadership and service. Um, and thankfully, um, finally, I'd like to recognize all the members of our community who serve in voluntary roles on various commissions, committees, operating companies, and boards who selflessly give their valuable time in order to ensure Pasadena, ensure Pasadena continues to be a phenomenal place to live and work. So if you're on a commission or a committee, could you please stand and be recognized? So welcome all. We're excited to have you here. Um, I would like to welcome Pasadena City College Associate Students President Emmanuel Gomez, who will begin our program with a land acknowledgement. Emmanuel, are you here? Ah, excellent. Come on up. Pasadena City College is a learning community within the indigenous homelands of people who have been known as the Gabrileño Band of Mission Indians of the Shishikwanga Village and Keech Nation. Tonight, we acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal from this land on which we gather. PCC and its faculty, staff, and students recognize that we're all simultaneously teachers, learners, and guests on these lands. <clears throat> this land acknowledgement is a small part of an ongoing process to be in working good relationship with the people of the land and embodying equity in our practices and policies. Thank you. Thank you very much and certainly important to acknowledge the history of um, this part of Pasadena and its heritage. Um, now I'd like to introduce Pasadena City College Chamber Singers, led by Director uh, Roger Guerrero. Guerrero, did I say that right? Um, who will be performing our national anthem. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to the choir to sing the Star Spangled Banner. Please stand. Yes. 
so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we Thank you, that was great. Um, we feel special to be in this auditorium and hear you in surround sound, so uh, apologize to those who are watching over Zoom, but it was fantastic. Um, anyway, now I'd like to in introduce um, PCC President, um, Dr. Andrew Jonas, who will join, lead us in the Pledge of, Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Dr. Andrew Jonas? Thank you. Okay, everybody gets to stand up again. <laughs> you get your exercise in. Okay, please put your hand over your heart and begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Um, now I'd like to welcome PCC student trustee um, David Ramirez to say a few words. David, you wanna come join us? Thank you, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, in the rooms of this college, students' lives are changed every day. The past two years, Pasadena City College and its students have faced insurmountable barriers. We have faced an increase in mental health issues, houselessness, food insecurity, and a decrease in statewide enrollment. Together, with the support of our community, we have persevered and now we're moving forward. However, it's always important to reflect on the past and see how far we've come. There's a room on the, in the CC building on the other side of campus where associated students hold their business meetings. And in that room, we have two walls with the portraits of our past presidents since the creation of our association. When you look at both sides, you will see just how vividly we've come. One side is a wall full of white men, and the other side is, it will show you progress. It was just two years ago that we, that we had our second female black president, Dion Shelton, who strongly advocated for the, creation of, for the creation of a black student success center. Now as a college, we've been federally recognized as a Hispanic serving institution with 48% Hispanic students, having received our first Title V HSI grant in the year 2000. Somos una universidad con la mayoría de nuestros estudiantes siendo hispanos. Como muchos otros estudiantes, llegué aquí sin idea de cómo existir en un sistema que para muchos se siente que no existe para nosotros. Pero Pasadena City College cambió mis pensamientos y opinión. Aquí, como muchos de mis compañeros, encontré el apoyo que necesitaba para sobresalir un, un pasado sin apoyo escolar. At Pasadena City College, we take pride in our diversity. We also dedicate ourselves to modeling solidarity, not just in words, but in action. We strive to act on the recognition that racism is a reality for our, for our communities. We recognize that in the 1940s, our public institutions promoted segregation in Pasadena by systematically dissuading black students from going into skilled labor. Now, if we look at how far we've come, we have a black STEM center a pro program led by Dr. Marilyn Johnson and a new Black Student Success Center led by Dr. Gina Lopez, and so many other programs like Ujima and Black Academia that show us how much further we need to go to close equity gaps rooted in Pasadena's de facto history of de facto racism. It's accomplishments like the establishment of the Student Advisory Group, Equipo, 
a group of Latino, Latina, Latinx student consultants that advise our Guided Pathways framework and other campus-wide initiatives that show us how inclusivity is instrumental in how we move forward. PCC is also proud to be hosting the HBCU Caravan, where students will be connected with historically black college and university campus representatives so that they can learn about the admission process, scholarship opportunities, student life, and even some on-the-spot admissions student on March 2nd from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Education is a civil right. Though seldom civil in its past, PCC's cultural wealth continues to inspire resilient scholars to self-advocate for an inclusive community that proclaims we are stronger together. As an alumni of Pasadena City College the and the first Latino mayor of Pasadena, Mayor Gordo is an example of the resilience fostered in these rooms. Similar to how the walls of the past presidents of PCC's associated students give us a reminder of the racial inequality in our history, and the city of Pasadena has its own walls of reminders. With that, I'd like to extend a very heartfelt welcome to all of you to Pasadena City College. Thank you, David. And it's um, obviously uh, tremendous to have such an institution of higher learning, embracing diversity and inclusion, and thank you for carrying that message to all of us. Um, now I'd like to turn it to the PCC Chamber Singers, who will sing Sweet Day. So back to you guys. Good evening, buenas noches a todos. Me llamo Roger Guerrero. I'm Roger Guerrero, and these are the Pasadena College, City College Chamber Singers. This piece, Sweet Day, by 20th century composer Ray Fon Williams. It's not an upbeat thing for you. It's not contemporary for you, but it does have a great message about values. He uses the metaphor of nature to remind us that when day passes into night, when the flowers of spring fade, these things, goodness, love, virtue, honesty, integrity, these things chiefly live. Sweet day. That was great. Um, let's give them one more round of applause. I think they earned it.
Um, now, as our tradition is to show our state of the city um, video, so I'm going to have them uh, fire up our 2021 state of the city, our 2022 state of the city video. So, roll video. Two years into the pandemic, 2021 illustrated the true resilience of the Pasadena community. Our residents have responded with adaptability and creativity that proved we're stronger together. As of February 15, 2022, Pasadena is fortunate to have achieved a high vaccination rate in the city, with 92.4% fully vaccinated and 99.3% vaccinated with at least one dose. This is in part due to the success of the vaccination clinics held throughout the year at locations across the city, including Pasadena City College. In addition, both PCC and PUSD partnered with the Pasadena Public Health Department to develop policies and procedures to keep staff and students safe while opening campuses for in-person learning. Restaurants also reopened and served their customers with a mix of takeout, indoor, and outdoor dining options. Many businesses provided flexibility to their staff by pivoting to a hybrid model of on-site and remote work. The end of 2021 signaled a move toward normalcy, with the return of several renowned Pasadena institutions and events. Local residents and visitors alike were delighted to line the streets again for the spectacle of the 133rd Rose Parade and its vibrant floats. Celebrating their centennial this year, the iconic Rose Bowl Stadium witnessed a thrilling athletic matchup between Ohio State and Utah for an epic return of the annual Rose Bowl game, in addition to hosting a number of concerts, sporting events, and America Fest. The Pasadena Convention Center welcomed back several popular conventions, like the Golden State Tattoo Expo, ACWA Water Convention, and the Capo Convention. Always a crowd favorite, the Latino Heritage Concert in the Park gave the public a chance to dance the night away at the Memorial Band Shell to the salsa beats of the popular band La Sonora Dinamita. Looking to contribute to a greener future to stem the effects of climate change, Pasadena installed a second electric vehicle fast charging depot with 26 charging stations. As an investment into our treasured green spaces, improvement projects are occurring at Villa Park, La Pintoresca Park, and the Robinson Park Pool. A brand new park broke ground in the Playhouse District in July 2021. Pasadena continues to be a world famous hub for science, technology, and entertainment. In January 2021, Caltech held a virtual dedication for their new Tian Chiao and Chrissy Chen Neuroscience Research Building, a centralized campus location for the future of brain research. Pasadena also paid tribute to one of its own musical legends, Eddie Van Halen, with a plaque unveiling at the Pasadena Civic Center. In an important milestone, the city held the first ever raising of a pride flag in recognition of Pride Month and in support of the LGBTQ community. The city of Pasadena had worked to address several ongoing public safety and community issues occurring in Pasadena. In an effort to improve community police relations, the Community Police Oversight Commission was created and its first meeting was held in October 2021 to ensure greater accountability and transparency from the Pasadena Police Department. Additionally, in October, city officials held a groundbreaking for the Salvation Army Hope Center, a 65-unit development for individuals experiencing homelessness that will also include a state-of-the-art food bank. Pasadena is resilient, and Pasadena residents are proving that. We are stronger together. Um, and also thank you for passing the media for putting the video together. So um, I'm not sure about you, but the last 12 months felt much longer, a bit like dog years. Despite a scary start of 2021, I was extremely hopeful last June when the vaccines were rolling out and our case counts plummeted to zero. And of course, we had the Delta variant, which was only to be outdone by Omicron early in 2022, which I contracted on New Year's Eve despite being vaccinated and boosted. I ended up having to isolate myself for 10 days, much to my family's chagrin, as I'm the primary cook and grocery shopper. Needless to say, my family has a new appreciation for my contributions to our household, um, which has allowed me to put in for a well overdue pay raise. It's really been a roller coaster for all of us. Like many of you, I was hoping that this would simply end, but that doesn't appear to be the case. That being said, between evolving vaccines effective treatments, and best practices, I'm hopeful that we will steadily find our way to a new normal. I'm proud of our community for working together 
to ensure no one was left behind as we navigated the second year of the COVID pandemic. Having participated, as I always do with my wife Liz and many other volunteers in the annual homeless count early this week, it is obvious that we still have important work to, be, to do to ensure our entire community is living with dignity. I believe our success stems from a compelling combination of our shared compassion as citizens and committed leadership. Though the city has done much, which Victor, Mayor Gordo, Victor, Mayor Gordo will touch on, I want to recognize those in our broader community. Our healthcare workers, homeless service organizations, food pantry operators, school teachers, volunteers, caregivers, parents, and so many others who have stepped up to address not just their personal challenges, but those of others. It truly takes a village during these difficult times. For sure, we haven't gotten everything right, but then again, this is uncharted terrain, hence the term once in a lifetime pandemic. It is these types of challenges that make us stronger and more aligned as a community. We must continue to focus our energy on seeking solutions while rejecting the, the blame game that has plagued other communities. By working together, we will continue to tackle COVID and other pressing community issues, including homelessness, racial tensions, affordable housing, pedestrian safety, central library restoration, and the future of our dear Rose Bowl. Pasadena's ability to survive and at times thrive is achieved not only by individuals going the extra mile, but in combination with leaders stepping up to the plate. You've seen this in hospitals, schools, places of worship, workplaces, and institutions, including the city of Pasadena. Though I'm happy to be the mayor's wingman and enjoy jumping in when needed, it is Mayor Gordo who has consistently and thoughtfully led us through these difficult 12 months. Not only has it played a vital leadership role here in Pasadena, but also been a powerful voice at the regional level with the San Gabriel Valley Council of Governments, the newly formed Burbank Glendale Pasadena Regional Trust for Affordable Housing, in the county sanitation district as they work to divert our organic waste stream and tackle other problems. These and other regional collaborations amplify advocacy while enhancing impact. No doubt, we have more challenging work in front of us. However, I'm confident that as, we, that as a community, if we focus on what unites us versus what divides us, we can continue to move forward and make Pasadena a place we all love and others admire around the globe. Some may be aware that I've announced that I'm not running for re-election. So before I formally turn over the podium to my good friend, Mayor Gordo, I want to take a brief moment to thank the community personally for the opportunity to serve both as your vice mayor and the council member for District 7 since 2015. Be assured I'm not leaving Pasadena or recanting my commitment to public service, but just taking time to regroup and see how I might continue to best serve this amazing community. It has truly both been a pleasure and an honor so with that, I'd like to turn over to Mayor Gordo for the 2022 State of the City Address. Victor. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. And before we get to uh, the script here, let me just thank all of you for joining us tonight at the uh, state of the city. We actually had to turn people away because of capacity issues. Um, I want to acknowledge and thank vice, the vice mayor and my city council colleagues, both past and present, uh, and our city employees who each day provide the exemplary service to Pasadena residents, businesses, and visitors alike. Thank you, Pasadena City College, President Erica Andrew Jonas. Uh, to you, Emmanuel Gomez, Associated uh, Student President, and, and David, our student trustee. We're fortunate that Cynthia Kurtz is currently serving as interim city manager. When Pasadena needed her most, Cynthia stepped up to assist through one of the most difficult times in the city's history. Thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> Thank you to all of you for the honor and privilege of serving as your mayor. As someone who arrived in this city as a monolingual Spanish-speaking five-year-old, I'm proud to say that I serve as mayor of Pasadena. Thank you for that honor and privilege. With this opportunity, of course, comes a great sacrifice of time, 
uh, with, my, with my wonderful wife, Kelly, and my children, Michael and Emma. I thank them from the bottom of my heart for their unwavering support. Please stand and say hello. In, 20, in 2021, our theme was, for the state of the city, was a time like no other. Uh, at this time last year, along with the rest of the world, we struggled in every aspect of our life, personal, professional, financial, health, family, and there was very little end in sight. Vaccines were thought to be rolled out, but were just being created. We communicated primarily via Zoom, and we watched as many of our neighbors struggled and mourned loved ones. At that time, I said that by working together, Pasadena would come out of the pandemic stronger than when we entered the pandemic. One year later, we have proven that Pasadena is in fact resilient and we are stronger together. In no way am I suggesting that the unprecedented challenges of the pandemic are completely behind us, as there will always be more trials. What I do believe is we can and we will overcome future hardships, not by pulling apart, but by coming together as a community, just as we did when we faced a time like no other last year. Be it violence on our streets, financial constraints, or a global pandemic, 2021 proved to us all that we are stronger together. Let me provide a brief update on our great city. Let's start with the pandemic. First, our hearts go out to those who have succumbed to COVID-19, those debilitated by it, and of course, their loved ones, and friends, let's observe a brief moment of silence for all those affected by the pandemic. And I'm going to add all of those who are suffering today um, at the hands of the Russian government in Kiev. In Kiev. And so I'd ask that we observe a moment of silence. Our, our thoughts are also with the incredible front health, frontline healthcare workers in our community that put in lengthy shifts at facilities, teaming with patients, and treat each patient as though each patient were a member of their family. The Pasadena Health Department, headed by Dr. Go, has led the, ch the charge and provided guidance on how to manage the pandemic safely. As a result, Pasadena is leading the way back. 90, you saw the numbers, 99.3% of all residents have received at least one vaccine dose. Over 92% of all residents are fully vaccinated. Our health department provided technical assistance to our schools and businesses, which allowed us to bounce back better and stronger. All of this occurred, mind you, parallel to the routine, if there is such a thing, an ongoing work of the health department, which, constant, which continued unabated, and that's no small accomplishment. Pasadena is one of only four cities in the entire state of California with its own health department, and it's an asset that we should always strive to protect. Congratulations to Dr. Go and the many partners such as Huntington Hospital, Day One, the NAACP, and the Pasadena Community Job Center who assisted, and kudos to residents that received the vaccine. While many throughout the country quarreled about the jab, we proved we are stronger together by collaboratively working to protect our health and that of our neighbors. Finally, on the issue of COVID, we must keep in mind the mental health impacts wrought by the, glo the, the global experience. I'm convinced that the pandemic has seared a change in all of us, in every aspect of our lives, and we must recognize the effect it has had on our mental health and the mental health of those who are most vulnerable, including children and seniors. I'm inviting the county's public health, mental health director to a council meeting to address this issue and make clear the county's strategy to assist the city and its residents as we grapple with the important issue of mental health. I would like to thank my friend and former uh, mayor, Bill Bogard, for his uh, role as chair of the housing task force. And I'd like to move us along to that subject, an important subject, with the advice and guidance of another former mayor, Rick Cole, who serves as my housing advisor, the task force has accomplished significant work in 2021. The 17-member group working with our planning and development and housing departments conducted nine meetings in 2021 and guided two housing element submittals to the state of California, which included stronger policies related to the production of affordable housing. 
The task force will work with city staff on any final revisions to, uh, prior to the council adoption of the housing element later this year and is also working on ways to maintain our current affordable housing stock and increase production of much needed affordable housing. In the coming months, the task force will focus its work on adaptive re reuse of commercial buildings, building on the success of the city's accessory dwelling unit program, prioritization of housing on public land, and investigating alternative finance structures for affordable housing production. Thank you, Mayor Bogart, for your work. You know, we can't say enough about the need for affordable housing. Much like the entire state, affordable housing remains a challenge in Pasadena. The high cost of housing and the effects of the pandemic have significantly impacted lower and middle income households. And our housing department is committed to creating and collaboratively addressing these challenges. I'm pleased to report to all of you this past year, a new accessory dwelling unit ordinance uh, unit I sh I sh program, I should say, was rolled out. Nearly 1,000 luxury apartment units were acquired for low and moderate income rental housing. Construction began on over 500 units of affordable housing, including the Salvation Army's Hope Center, a very much needed 64 unit permanent supportive housing development. 184 rental, additional rental vouchers were secured to provide permanent supportive housing to community members and over 20, 200 persons experiencing homelessness were provided motel vouchers. Another 500 units are awaiting full funding, including two critically needed permanent supportive housing for, project, project, for persons experiencing chronic homelessness. We also work with community partners to assist low income and vulnerable households to apply for the state emergency rental assistance. Switching gears, the Rose Bowl is back. Congratulations to the Tournament of Roses, to the Rose Bowl, and to the Rose Bowl Stadium, also known as America Stadium. It's a national historic landmark that has faced adversity in the last several years. While a global pandemic threatened its livelihood and existence, stadium staff pivoted creatively and found new ways of entertaining the community and generating income to remain viable. The, sta the stadium became the number one drive-in location for entertainment in Southern California and served as a COVID testing site during the height of the pandemic, performing over 9,500 tests for Pasadena residents and essential workers. And all this while other venues of its size remain dormant. A top priority of the stadium has been giving back to lo the local community, and that was no different during the pandemic. The Rose Bowl Legacy Foundation raised funds to provide, yes, 75,000 meals to PUSD families. The stadium hosted local high school graduations when only outdoor, large, only outdoor gatherings were permitted and became home to John Muir and Pasadena High School. The Rose Bowl has endured arduous times and we still need to tackle, tackle a structural deficit in the years ahead. But with Legacy's leadership, supportive donors, and the bestowing of federal grants and by attracting, importantly, more events, its financial position has improved by $25 million in the last nine months alone. The Rose Bowl is just shy of turning 100 years old and our collective goal and my challenge to you is that we launch it into those next 100 years and ensure that the Rose Bowl takes its place, not just as America's stadium today, but as the world's stadium tomorrow. That's the goal for the next 100 years. The centennial celebration is a story of perseverance and Rose Bowl staff continue to raise the bar with new event models, creative thinking, and maintaining community outreach at its core. Keeping traditions alive and continuing to rest, invest in our, in our iconic venue will ensure the Rose Bowl sees, sees the next 100 years of, histories, of, of its history. Let's switch to libraries. While navigating the spread of the virus, we found our routines and daily activities upended, disrupted and dis or discontinued. Schools and businesses shuttered their doors and we physically distanced ourselves from others. What succeeded in bringing down the walls that separated us? 
our public library. Our library system brought us back together through virtual programs that greeted over 49,000 attendees and welcomed an increase in website hits that exceeded 430,000 visitors. Over 38,000 research sessions were conducted on our library databases. More than 3,000 individuals, importantly, Emma and Michael, obtained a new library card. And dedicated library staff kept us informed, educated, and entertained with the circulation of nearly 615,000 books, DVDs, and other collections. Although our central library remains closed due to structural vulnerability, vulnerability, you can be sure it will reopen once again once the full assessment mitigation plan seismic retrofit is complete. We have already embarked on that process to re-envision the central library and have received $4 million from the state to help rehabilitate this civic jewel. Steeped in history with over a century of archive collections, our library is also a contemporary forward-looking establishment offering a wide variety of programs, including, I didn't know this, robotics, computer coding, 3D printing, and a hands-on lab for tinkering, designing, and creating. Our library now lends out free Chromebooks and free hotspots for Wi-Fi access regardless of need. Thanks to our friends of the Pasadena Public Library for providing those resources. Neil Gaiman, a popular English author, once said, Google can bring back 100,000 answers. A librarian can bring you back the right one. There's no doubt in my mind he was talking about our Pasadena librarians. Thank you. Fire, our fire and police department. We owe, to, we owe a debt of gratitude to the Pasadena Fire and Police Departments who in the most difficult of circumstances continued to report to work and respond to service calls. During the last year, the fire department responded to over uh, 17,000 emergency calls for service, of which nearly 3,200 were fire-related and a little over 13,000 were medical-related. The department assisted in 16 statewide mutual aid incidents during the second half of 2021 alone, implemented a professional standards unit, and the department's basic vacancy rate is the lowest it has been in 15 years. Our police department's dispatch center responded to 235,000 calls, 62,000 of which were to 911, and 115,000 of those calls resulted in calls for service. The Pasadena Police Department made nearly 3,000 homeless outreach efforts and removed 336 firearms from our streets. Thank you to our chiefs and to the brave men and women of the Pasadena Police Department. Also, as members of the Public Safety Committee, thank you to Council Members Hampton, Kennedy, and Madison for your dedicated efforts in reviewing matters relating to police services in our Pasadena Police and Fire Departments. The city's finances, along with the health impacts, the pandemic, as we all know, brought financial challenges, not only to residents and businesses, but to the city's coffers as well. Although some industries are still challenged by the pandemic, such as travel, hotel, retail, uh, including the convention center and the stadium, property tax kept us resilient and is the city's largest revenue source. The strong real estate market has provided resiliency to the city's general fund. Sales tax measures I, I tax revenue has also realized strong results. The auto sales industry has done very well, maybe too well, having bought a car recently, uh, over, has done very well over the past two years. And collections of both sales tax and Measure I on most online sales has been a saving grace. The flexibility of Measure I revenue has allowed Pasadena to maintain critical services. This saving grace has also allowed us to provide much needed support to the Pasadena Unified School District through Measure J. While the overall picture is very positive, uh, the city's financial forecast will be challenged by some key revenues related to industry, industries that will take several years to recover. For example, the travel industry 
is expecting a slower recovery and will not return to pre-pandemic levels until 2025. Business, travel, um, a sector that brings the majority of people to Pasadena is, uh, is also of particular interest. And of course, we're all watching the CPI and the consumer price index and the producer price index and its tremendous impact, not just in our personal life, but to the city's cost in all sectors. Under the guidance of the Finance Committee, that includes Council Member Williams, Council Member Kennedy, Vice Mayor Wilson, the city will continue to watch national and global economic forecasts as Pasadena's revenues and expenditures are affected. Let's talk about Pasadena's, the attraction of Pasadena. Pasadena continues to attract investment. We anticipate, not too far from here, the Constance Hotel to reopen under new ownership this coming May. And while we can't yet announce the brand, we can be sure that the brand will enhance our Pasadena brand. Adding to Pasadena's reputation as a center for innovation is the arrival of motive space systems. Designers and builders of robotic arms, motor controllers, and mechanisms for space agencies, such as NASA and JPL. We're also welcoming Miso Robotics, a developer of artificial intelligence-driven robots to assist chefs in preparation of food. We are also welcoming a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company to Pasadena, Zencore, which is developing, developing engineered mono, monoclonal antibodies and proteins to combat cancer and autoimmune uh, diseases. We should all be electrified by the arrival of Lucid Motors to Pasadena, an electric vehicle manufacturer known for designing the longest range, fastest charging electric car. Plus, in, in the summer of 2023, for all you shoppers and foodies, we expect Erewhon Market to bring new energy and niche locally produced organic food to South Lake Avenue at the site of the former Borders Bookstore. That's a, store, that's a property we've been looking to renovate for quite some time, and I'm happy to report that. We will we'll continue to be stronger in 2022, and let me give you a brief glimpse forward. Early child development and early learning. When a crisis occurs, child development doesn't stop. Uh, our kids keep growing. I can provide uh, proof of that. As such, it is imperative that our young children and families receive critical resources to survive the pandemic and to thrive in the years beyond it. Eight years ago, former PUSD Superintendent Dr. Vera Vignes led the effort to develop our Early Childhood Development Policy Master Plan for the, for the young child. That, pro, that program unites programs and services to improve the lives of children's ages birth to five years in our community. The city established the Office of the Young Child in 2016 to carry out that important work. And we now find ourselves challenged by the pandemics and the impacts of the pandemic, racial injustice, cycles of violence, and economic instability. I am concerned with our youngest children and their families and how they're doing. To this end, I'm recommending that the city council form a task force that will work with city staff to review implementation of our early childhood development policy and recommend a path forward to ensure support of our young children. Task, task force members will represent a broad cross-section cross of early childhood experts from across Pasadena representing a diverse, uh, diverse parental needs. The task force, task force will provide its first update to the city council uh, in June of this year, excuse me. Vocational training opportunities. In 1970, and, and I was astonished by these numbers, less than 8% of Americans age 25 and older possessed a college degree, 8%. While today that number is nearly 37%, we must do more for the remaining 60 plus percent. Together with my council colleagues, I am committed to increasing available pathways to success for Pasadena residents, 
particularly those deciding that college is not their first or chosen path. Far too often, we all see young people miss opportunities to develop their interest in vocational fields, such as plumbing, electrical, carpentry, or ironwork, fields that can lead to rewarding and good paying careers. I also hear, and many of us do, from pot potential empo employers that struggle to find well-trained and reliable workers in those same fields. It is our responsibility to become stronger together by helping to address that disconnect, to bring city resources, PCC, PUSD, and our labor partners together. I've asked my friend Doug Cranwinkle to work with an ad hoc committee of the city council uh, consisting of council members Hampton, Rivas, and Kennedy to spearhead an effort to increase vocational training opportunities for young people in Pasadena. And you can expect to hear more in the coming weeks. Now, let's talk about the 710 corridor. Relinquishment and reimagining the 710 corridor. If that's not music to your ears, uh, I don't know where you've been for 60, 70 years. I'm happy to report that this past year, we worked diligently to bring the 710 corridor back to its rightful owner, the residents of Pasadena. With successful completion of the technical feasibility analysis in 2021, we have now initiated the Caltrans relinquishment process uh, for, the, for the 710 Northern Stub to Pasadena. Thank you to Council Member Madison for ensuring the city moves swiftly and for providing guidance and uh, moving forward. Once the relinquishment process is complete, the next challenge is to reimagine that portion of our city. The corridor, let's keep in mind, is not only an important gateway to West Pasadena, but also to Old Pasadena and to Huntington Hospital for ambulances and first responders, not to mention an important traffic corridor in our city. As we look to restitch our city and reimagine the possibilities of receiving land not considered in a few generations, this is a great opportunity to engage in, in a public and transparent process. Land is valuable because nobody's making more of it. So we have a tremendous, tremendous responsibility to get this right. I look forward to re visioning and the planning process that will soon be underway. Pasadena's utility. Pasadena's Department of Water and Power has always been a leader. And as many of you know, PWP was one of the original five founders of the Metropolitan Water District, which has played a very important role in the evolution of all of Southern California. Think about that, one of the first five founders of MET. Last year, PWP provided $2.74 million in rebates and services for conservation and sustainability. And by working closely with Pasadena residents, was able to cumulatively reduce green, greenhouse gas emissions by over 57% compared to 1990 levels. Let me say that again. Reduce greenhouse gas emissions by over 57% compared to 1990 levels. Under the guidance of Vice Mayor Wilson, Chair of the Municipal Services Committee, PWP continues to lead by expanding its electrification efforts with several EV infrastructure expansion projects. Most notably, the recently uh, opened Arroyo EV Charging Depot at the 110. Pasadena, this is Pasadena's second joint project with Tesla. Charging stations are conveniently located next to the 110 freeway and is traveled by a large number of commuters in the greater LA area. Uh, and it features 26 charging stations. Um, the budget, you know, for, for some time I've advocated for a revamp budget process. The current process involves a series of budget hearings before the Finance Committee in conjunction with the City Council, where departments are afforded a brief period to present an outline of, the, of their budget. The Finance Committee selects a department or two or an issue or two uh, to dig into and recommends approval of an $892 million budget. 
I believe this is a rushed process that does not allow for a deep dive into budget priorities. We can and we will do better. We can make our budget process stronger and we'll do that together. With the advice and consent of our city manager, this, this year's process will be different. Com committees with subject matter responsibility uh, over a department will review respective budgets and be able to dig into their uh, programs. For example, the Public Safety Committee will review the police and fire department budgets, and the Municipal Services Committee will review the water and power budget. It's my hope that this process will allow for improved oversight by Pasadena's elected officials of precious city dollars and resources and provide the public a better opportunity to review not only budgetary numbers, but also the effectiveness and efficiency of our programs and related expenditures. And switching gears, speaking of Cynthia, again, thank you to Cynthia for answering the call when our city needed you. I've joked with people that I don't understand why we're in a hurry to find the second best city manager when we already have the best in Cynthia. So unless we can convince Cynthia to extend her contract a few more years, hint, hint, <laughs> we'll see, we will see the arrival of a new city manager this calendar year. We've retained a consultant and are now proceeding to solicit applicants. Selecting our chief executive is the most important decision the city council will make in the coming months. And I've, I've appointed an ad hoc committee of the city council to guide the process along. In conclusion, let me reemphasize that while we have much to improve and much work to do, today Pasadena is stronger together because we've worked and grown together during the most difficult of times. Be assured that your city council and your city staff is committed to continuing to build our community. And hopefully next year's theme will be recovery and moving forward from the pandemic together. I wanna thank all of you for having made the time and for the honor and privilege of serving as your mayor. I'd particularly like to thank past, uh, President uh, and, and Drijonas and Pasadena City College, uh, who gave me the opportunity to continue my education. Uh, without Pasadena City College, there would be no Mayor Victor Gordo. Uh, and that's an important uh, thing to keep in mind for all of us. This great institution provides an opportunity to a lot of young people and we should always strive to protect it. I thank you again for the honor and the privilege of serving as your mayor. Thank you very much. Questions. I'm happy to take any questions or <laughs> any questions. Let me let me start with asking since I I stepped off the stage a little prematurely. How are our business businesses doing? I had the the representatives of each of the business districts in the mayor's office. I think it was yesterday and asked that question. And I'm happy to report to all of you that. Every one of our business districts, Old Pasadena, South Lake, the Playhouse District, is reporting to a different levels of degree that they are back to pre-pandemic pre uh, revenue. And that just shows the strength of our Pasadena, shows the strength of our, pass, of our, of our um, uh, Pasadena business community and the fact that people want to come to Pasadena. Uh, we are concerned and they are concerned about the vacancy rate and that's why re re looking at commercial buildings and what we do with those buildings will become very important. Um, and so I look forward to doing that together with all of you. 
Any other questions? Since I asked my own and answered it. <laughs> well, again, I want to thank all of you um, for, the, for the opportunity to serve as your mayor. Uh, and I want to personally thank, again, my family for the support that they give me every day. Thank you, everyone.